Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is the FBI temporarily backing off on the Apple case. If you've watched my videos, you know that there's big case between the FBI and the Apple over a San Bernardino terrorist's iPhone, which I talked about in some previous videos. Tuesday, the courts had a hearing scheduled for this particular case, but yesterday the FBI filed a motion to vacate that hearing, which means they wanted to cancel that hearing and temporarily delay this case in the courts. So what happened? Well, according to the documents, apparently the FBI has found some sort of outside source that feels they can actually gain access to this terrorist's iPhone. So what does this mean for the whole FBI versus Apple case? Well, in the short term, it's good news as the FBI may not have to force Apple into purposely weakening their security. However, without knowing how the external organization is going to help the FBI break into this phone, it's really hard to say whether or not it's going to be good news long term. Now I can probably imagine really three ways that this external party in the FBI might break into this terrorist phone. In fact, one of those ways was actually proposed by one of the leading iOS forensic experts out there, someone named Jonathan Jarsky. In any case, he mentioned that using hardware hacking techniques to gain access to memory, specifically the memory where iOS actually stores passcode attempts, the FBI might be able to try to brute force the pass code using multiple attempts, but once they get to that ninth attempt, which might wipe the phone at the tenth attempt, they could then actually reflash memory so that it seems like there hasn't been any attempts and continue their brute forcing effort. In that case, it kind of could be a win-win because that doesn't really use any software vulnerability in the phone, so there's no new vulnerability that Apple would have to patch to protect its users, and of course it doesn't require Apple actually weakening their security. Now, the other two ways both involve some sort of previously unknown zero-day vulnerability in iOS. Researchers find new vulnerabilities in iOS all the time. In fact, often vulnerabilities that might give you access to a phone. In fact, yesterday was patch day where researchers fixed a ton of vulnerabilities in iOS. There could be a third party that shared a new uh, zero-day vulnerability with the FBI that they can use to get into the iPhone. Now, this would have to be a very specific vulnerability since they can't actually get into this iPhone, it can't be a vulnerability that requires any sort of user interaction. Now, if this is the case, if a third party has shared a new zero day with the FBI, that could be good or it could be bad. Let's just imagine that one of the flaws that was patched yesterday, a researcher approached the FBI and said, perhaps you can use this now patched vulnerability to break into that old iPhone, which doesn't have the latest version of iOS. In that case, it's not really that big a deal for iOS customers because Apple does know about that zero day flaw and it is already fixed. So it would actually be a win-win situation again, where the FBI gets into the phone, Apple doesn't have to weaken their security, and Apple also knows about this vulnerability and in this imaginary scenario has already fixed it. But there could be another option where perhaps a third party has sold a new zero day flaw to the FBI. And if this is truly a zero day, one that Apple doesn't know yet, this could be an issue. The problem with this is if I'm a red team hacker, I want to hold on to my zero day. I don't want to share it with vendors who will then patch it and then will take away my ability to hack my adversaries. So I don't like the idea of any government agency buying a zero day flaw or getting a zero day flaw that they don't share with the vendor. This imaginary zero day flaw could affect all iOS devices. So if any government were to hold on to it without letting Apple or a vendor know, it really puts everyone at risk. In any case, I think it's a very interesting and pivotal update to this case. The fact that they've delayed it, the fact that they think they might be able to get into the phone without Apple's help, and the possible ramifications. This could be good news if it doesn't really introduce any new vulnerabilities to iOS public in general, but it could be bad news if it is a zero day flaw and the FBI wants to hold on to it for future use. Again, without knowing the full details on how the outside party plans to help the FBI, this is all conjecture, but it's definitely a story worth watching. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.